morning, everybody. So excited to see you all here. Let's go ahead and get settled in. Welcome, welcome. So very excited. You could join us on our very first workshop of the summer season. Woohoo! The Code HS free workshops are back. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm so excited that I recognize names already. So it's so much fun for me. I've gotten to do the uh, uh, summer workshops for a few summers now. And I feel like every year I just get to get reacquainted with uh, some teachers I haven't seen for a while. So welcome back, everybody. My puppy is so excited right now. If you could all see him, he is thrilled that is also the first Code HS summer workshop. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Lori, and I'm a senior PD specialist here at Code HS. Um, I have now been at Code HS for over three years. I can hardly believe it. I felt I feel like it was just a few months ago that I was using Code HS in my own classroom. So I am so glad I can be back again with all of you this summer and get to talk Code HS again. Uh, so we will get started in a moment. Let people get settled in. We do have a couple of things to point out while we're uh, getting ready. Um, what I will mention is that we do have a chat open and we have Q&A available. Now, what we really wanna do is make sure we don't lose anybody's questions. So if you've got questions, if you could drop those into the Q&A, um, we will be watching those on the back end and uh, making sure that we get your questions answered. And uh, we have a full Code HS crew with us for this workshop today. Um, we also have Gareth with, with us. I'm just adding THs into your whole introductions, Gareth. <laughs> so, Gareth is part of our amazing support team. I cannot give enough kudos to Gareth and our support team. You all are amazing and uh, you keep us all running, all the Code HS educators around the world and the Code HS team, because we ask questions of you all the time. So always happy to help. <laughs> and Gareth is going to be helping us out today. So welcome, Gareth. All right. And we've got a couple more people joining. So again, let's go ahead and get settled in and get ready for this awesome first workshop of the summer season. And if you'd like to go ahead and start uh, throwing some introductions into chat, we would love to know where you're joining us from. I love putting together a map to see where all of our Code HS educators are at. So. Go ahead and toss anything in that you would like. Awesome. Hey, Travis from Oklahoma, Kentucky. Welcome, Jeffrey. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Ooh, Florida's joining us today. Love it. Nebraska. I wonder if I met you when I was, if you were at the, uh, one of the conferences I went to in Nebraska this year. Welcome. Hey, Melissa. Welcome. Welcome to Pennsylvania. Hey, Sally. I see you, Pottsville. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes, you know what? I think we did meet at Nita. I think we did, Lisa. Nice to see you again. Very, yeah, totally, we did. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. <gasps> Welcome, everybody. I'm telling you, this is my favorite part of the summer is having these workshops and getting to see, getting to see friends. So. Excited to be here with all of you today. All right, so you all have heard me just jabbering on and on for way too long already. Um, well, who you came to see is our amazing PD specialist, Robin Leslie. So Aww. I'm gonna turn it over to Robin and Robin is gonna take us through some getting started with Code HS. Robin, take it away, my dear. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited that you're here um, wanting to learn more about Code HS. Uh, we do have a jam-packed session for you. We will have a break about halfway through because I know two hours is, is kind of long. Um, like Lori said, if you do have any questions while I'm going through the presentation, feel free to use that Q&A. And uh, both Lori and Gareth will be able to answer any of your questions as we go. I wanna make sure that all of your questions are answered um, before we leave today. And if there's something we can't answer on the fly, we will most definitely find the answer for you um, and get back to you. Uh, the first link I have on here is a link to all of the slides that I'm using today. And there are a lot of slides. I'm not going to click through everyone 
of the slides. At some point, I'll actually just head to the Code HS platform and be working on there with you. But the slides are really for you to look back at uh, for any information that you need, or if you thought that we went too fast, because it is a lot of information, you'll be able to look back at these slides um, whenever you'd like. So the slides link is in the chat for you if you would like to click on. The other thing is um, you don't have to have the slides open and try and watch me. I don't know how many monitors you have. Maybe you only have one and you only have so much room. So feel free if maybe you just want to um, open it up, save the link, set it aside, but you definitely don't have to try and man every window while we're going. And then the other link we have is a link um, to a document that's got all of the links that you might need for this presentation. So that one is going to, that one is in the chat and you can click on that one and it's got all of the necessary links that you would need for this workshop. So I'll give you just a minute for that one as well. We will continue to put the links in the chat for you as, as we go. Um, but if you wanted to have that document open, you most definitely can because it's got everything on there that you need to get to. All right. So a couple other questions that I have for you. Um, so we saw where you are from. I would like to know if you've used Code HS before, because many times people either want a refresher or they don't think they know everything about Code HS. Maybe they used it for a year and they're back to um, get some more information. Um, also, what grade levels you teach uh, would be awesome. Oh, we already have a never. Nice. Students 10 to 12. Very limited. Okay. And then while you are answering those questions, I do have the next slide is about me, but I'll tell you about me while you guys are typing away. So I um, was a business teacher in high school and I started teaching business classes. And then they had asked me if I would like to teach computer science. I knew nothing about computer science, but I said, sure, why not? Sounds fun. Um, and I actually used Code HS to learn computer science. And I used the platform um, to teach my students. And now I'm working for Code HS. So I love Code HS, very passionate about computer science. And so that is why I am here. So lots of never used. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here checking it out. All right. So here is my uh, slide, but I just told you almost everything about me. All right, here's our agenda for today. So as I told you, it is jam packed. We do have a bunch of information in the slide deck. Um, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed, uh, take in what you can, and then feel free to look back at these slides later. But you can see you are going to learn about what is Code HS. We are going to be going over the courses that we offer and how to navigate our course catalog. We will talk about how you can create a course and also create sections for that course. I'll walk you through how the code editor works and our auto grading. And then I will walk uh, walk you through a lesson so you can see what it's like from the student uh, perspective to go through a Code HS lesson. We'll talk about some awesome things that you can do to customize your course, um, add things to your course, uh, take things away, um, move them around. We have supplemental activities. So there are a lot of different things that you can do to customize your course. And then we have many, many teacher tools and resources that are available for you as well. And I will go over some of those today. And then we will wrap up. And like I said, we'll take a break about halfway through. All right, so if you need an account, because we have a lot of people who are new to Code HS, and I am very excited, this is the link that you would use to sign up for a free teacher account. 
And so you will be able to access anything that we need to use today in the workshop once you sign up. Um, you will not have access to all of the solutions for all of the courses yet. Um, that is because we do go through a verification process to make sure that you are actually a teacher. I know it's crazy, but sometimes students try to sign up as a teacher uh, to get all of the uh, solutions. So we do take a little bit of time to check out to make sure that if you're signing up as a teacher, you are a teacher. So I'll give you a minute to get in there and sign up. And again, if you have any questions um, or uh, anything is not working right, feel free to use that Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom window. If for some reason you cannot um, log into your CodeHS account or you cannot create one right now, that is totally fine. You can still go through this workshop without any trouble. And of course, you can go back and do some of the things that we're going to do later on on your own. So if you happen to be someplace where you can't uh, create your account or log in, that is totally okay. And then the other slide I will put up is a link to enroll in the section we are using today for our workshop. So the first link gets you um, signed up into CodeHS for a free teacher account. And this next link will get you enrolled in our section that we created for today's workshop. Again, if you have any problems, let us know. If you were able to log into the section already, can I get a thumbs up? See if it's working? Oh, yay, awesome. Okay, good. And if you have any questions at all about getting into that uh, section, go ahead and throw a message into the Q&A and Gareth or I can help you with that. All right, last link for a little bit. Um, you do get a certificate of attendance for coming to our two-hour webinar today. So if you click that link, and it will be put in the chat as well if you don't have your slides open, that is for your certificate of attendance. And that link will also be at the end of the slides just in case you missed it at the beginning. And nothing really to do once you click that, it should say thank you very much and you are good to go. So many links, so little time. You guys are doing good though. <laughs> There is not a link on the next slide, so you will be happy. <laughs> we'll give you a little bit of break here. All right. So what is Code HS? So like I said, many of you said that you were new to Code HS, and we're super excited to have you here checking it out. 
So CodeHS is a comprehensive platform for teaching computer science. And basically what that means is we have everything that you need to bring a successful CS program to your school or district. We are now K through 12 web-based computer science curriculum. So we have added elementary school just recently. Uh, also online and offline professional development. So we do have professional development that we do like this. Uh, we do custom professional development. We do free professional development. Um, we also have a professional development membership that you can join to have access to all of those things. Um, and everything is online. So that's the nice thing is that students don't have to go out and use uh, another website or remember another username or password or have various things open up on their computer. Everything is located within Code HS. So how did Code HS get started? Well, meet Jeremy and Zach. Uh, Jeremy and Zach met their freshman year at Stanford, um, and they were both there for computer science, and they helped to teach the intro computer science classes. And together, they started Code HS their senior year while at Stanford in 2012. So we've been going for a while here. Um, they actually had the headquarters there in California for many years. But a few years ago, they moved the headquarters to Chicago, and that is where um, we are right now. Uh, there's a, a nice picture of their pink van that they drove around. Uh, they visited hundreds of classrooms um, across the U.S. in two road trips that they did. And we do still love to go uh, in person out to schools as much as we can. We do a lot of the online PD, but anytime that we can go to a school in person, we would absolutely love to do that. And then the mission of Code HS is to empower all students to meaning meaningfully impact the future. So we want to make sure that they have the tools needed to do that. So a problem today is many schools don't teach computer science and it is starting to become more popular and more states are now starting to require maybe one computer science course uh, or things like that. But schools out of the blue, just if somebody tells them they need to teach computer science, uh, they need the tools, they need the resources. And so that is what Code HS is here for is to help schools and help teachers bring computer science to the classroom. And like I said, we have everything um, that you would need to be able to do that. So hopefully you will see that um, Code HS is a great solution for getting started teaching computer science and continuing to teach it because um, as you will see later, we have lots and lots of courses to choose from. And then we also have instant feedback and submission system, grading and tracking tools for teachers. And I, like I said, it is all web-based. So there are no additional downloads or plugins needed. It works on Chromebooks, Macs, Windows, um, everything that you would need. Here are um, just some of the teacher tools and resources that we have available at Code HS. I'll give you a minute to kind of glance through. All right, so I'd like to get started um, with some of the curriculum that we offer. So we just started this past year with our elementary CS curriculum. 
And we do have interdisciplinary CS lessons uh, for elementary school. And then we also have uh, lessons that are just for learning computer science. And they're all project-based. If you would like to learn more about that, we do have a link for you there. And the nice thing is uh, we do use a Scratch Junior in K to two, and then we use Scratch in three to five, grades three to five. I believe right now there are around 235 different lessons. So we do have an amazing curriculum development team who has been working to create all of the new elementary school lessons. And then the next is our um, middle school computer science. We have had middle school computer science classes for a while. Uh, we know that they need to be engaging and relatable to students. We know that some students already know a little bit of computer science and some are beginners. So we know that we need to allow for multiple entry points. Um, and then the, tra the transition from elementary to middle school with the coding. And we also look at that between middle school and high school. And the goal is to prepare students to take their high school computer science courses. So something that they came up with is this modular solution for middle school. So our uh, curriculum developers uh, created 10 different modules that um, middle school teachers can choose from. And each of the modules is 10 hours um, of content. And then as you can see here, we have some that would be uh, more geared toward uh, the lower middle school grade. So fifth or sixth grade, we do have um, three modules for those grade levels. And we have some descriptions of each module here. And the nice thing about these 10 modules is you can mix and match them. So you don't have to use them um, all and you don't have to use them um, in order. So you can choose how you would like to use those. So again, these are the lower middle school. And here are some upper middle school modules that you can choose from. As you can see, uh, exploring game design, very popular uh, with students all the time, any grade level. And we also have exploring art with code. So that is um, graphics. And then these modules can be used in lower or upper. So there's the exploring computing, web design, digital citizenship, and the internet. And then this is that mix and match middle school course that um, once we get to the course catalog, you will be able to see where that course is. Here's some more information. And then if you don't want to mix and match, we do have two pre-built courses that have the modules in them. So the first one is called Computer Science Explorations 1. And you can see um, it's got Carol Adventures 1 and 2, Exploring Computing, Tracy Adventures, and then the Digital Citizenship. And then exploring, or I'm sorry, computer science explorations two, exploring programming with Carol, the internet, web design, art with code, and game design. So those are already set up uh, and ready to go for you. And then here are some of our existing middle school courses that we have. So we do have Introduction to Physical Computing with Microbit. So if you wanted to do physical computing, we also have Creating a Game with Roblox, Coding in Math, and also Coding in Science. So 
So when you're thinking about what courses you might want to offer, of course, uh, if there's something that's required, uh, we need to look at the state standards um, and figure out if you're trying to put together a pathway for your school, um, if you're incorporating computer science into um, another course or if it's a standalone course. So there are a lot of different things to look at when you're trying to decide what course um, it is you want to teach. So some things to think about if you want an introductory computer science course, or if you want it to focus on a specific programming language or a specific programming topic like cybersecurity or web design. Um, and then of course, there are courses that expose students to a variety of CS topics. So if you don't wanna just pick one and you want to expose them to many of the CS topics, there are courses for that as well. And then uh, of course, thinking about the difficulty um, of the course. If you wanted it to be introductory, if you wanted it to be advanced or AP, all things to think about when you're trying to decide um, what courses you would like to offer. There are some other considerations, is how much time do you have? So when we get into the course catalog, you'll see that we do let you know how many hours of content that there is, and there is a syllabus that kind of breaks it up for you. So if you know you only have so much time, you'll be able to work through that and pick and choose uh, and figure out you know, what course would be best for you based on how often you see your students and how much time you have with them. Uh, also, if you wanted to use coding or non-coding, and then if you wanted to use block or text. So those are some things to think about. Um, some students like to use the blocks, some like text, and we do have courses where you can offer um, for students to use either blocks or text. So that's something that you can do as well. And then we talked about the difficulty and we talked about obviously the standards, making sure that um, you are hitting any of the state standards that you're required to hit. And then all of the code HS courses in the six through 12 pathway are aligned to and support the CSTA standards and the K-12 CS framework. So we are aligned with these standards. And when we get into um, the course catalog as well, um, we do have some courses that we have created for specific states um, and those courses are aligned to those specific state standards as well. So um, you can take a look at the states tab once we get into the course catalog. And then here is a six through 12 um, pathway that you can take a look at. Um, as you can see, we do have some options going from six through 12th grade for your um, for you to choose from. And this actually um, is going to be updated very shortly because Code HS is always working on creating uh, new courses and updating courses. And so they've been working very hard already um, over the summer and leading into summer. And so we will have some um, newer options as well. And then I wanted to look at some intro courses for you. So the computing ideas course, that um, is listed that it can be used in grades six through nine, and it covers a, a broad variety of topics. Each unit here is a standalone unit. So if you're looking for exposure for beginning computer scientists, computing ideas is the course for you. It's designed as a survey course for students in middle to early high school. Um, and I like this course because it's made up of the self-contained modules, each of which gives an overview of different computer science topics um, or a concept. And they can be moved around and taught in any order. Another class for grades six through nine is Tech Apps and Coding Course. And this one is 100% aligned to the CSTA um, two standards. And uh, students will explore the basics of programming, web design, internet safety, and how information is represented digitally and sent over the internet. So this is a popular course.
And then we have some introduction to computer science courses. We have our intro to computer science using the JavaScript language. We also have it um, if you would like to do that using um, Python. We have intro to Java and we have a new course that is intro to C++. And that one people have been asking for for a little bit. And so um, our curriculum team went ahead and put that one together. And on this slide, um, this is all also located in the course catalog, but all of the links um, take you to the course overview so you can learn more information about that course. And you can wait and do that if you want to uh, when we get to the catalog. And then of course the syllabus that has a wealth of information to help you figure out if that is the course for you. And then we do have AP courses. So if you're interested in um, offering any AP courses at your school, we do have AP uh, CS principles uh, using JavaScript, and then we also have it in Python, so AP CSP. Uh, and then we also have in cybersecurity. And then we have a review course uh, to help students before they go ahead and take that AP CSP test. They could go through the review course as well to help them solidify their knowledge and skills before taking the AP test. And these are AP CSA courses. So we do have um, a Nitro course. We do have AP CSA MOCA. We have labs. And then we also have the review for um, before taking the AP CSA test. So the AP CSA Nitro is fully aligned to the College Board AP CSA course standards. So they learn the basics of object-oriented programming with a focus on problem solving and algorithm development. And then here are some other courses we offer at CodeHS. We have web design courses. And as you can see, um, some are a year long, some are for high school, some are for middle school, um, some are for a semester. And then uh, we do have other courses that have web design within them. So it's not a full web design course, but students do learn about web design um, in the courses listed at the bottom. So they get a little taste of web design in those. And then very popular lately, um, for good reason, cybersecurity courses. So we do have some cybersecurity courses. We have a fundamentals of cybersecurity. And then we have an advanced cybersecurity course. Those are both a year long. Um, and then we have two courses at the bottom that are both 40 contact hours. So one of them is cybersecurity using JavaScript, and the other one is cybersecurity using Python. And it's a collection of individual educational units, supplemental materials, and activities. Um, and they have been designed as an easy way to integrate cybersecurity concepts into APCSP. Um, so those are ones that you can look at as well. Uh, the material in the NCYTE um, is based upon work supported by National Cybersecurity Training and Education. That's the NCYTE. Um, so there was a grant issued for that. And so we created those, those two 40-hour courses. And then physical computing. So we do have physical computing. Um, if you're interested in our elementary uh, curriculum, there's lots of physical computing, but we also have physical computing for middle school and high school. 
So if you're interested in the micro bit, which is um, really a cool product to get students um, seeing what their coding does, not just on a screen, but actually physically and in person, uh, we do have the middle school. It's a quarter long. And then we have physical computing with Arduino. And that's a high school course. That's also um, a quarter long. So you could incorporate that into your courses. Um, and it does let you know that the micro bit is integrated Carol and Tracy courses available. And then the Arduino is integrated Python and JavaScript courses available as well. So physical computing is always fun to do. Now, I know you guys are asking some good questions in the Q&A. Um, Gareth and Lori are working hard to answer all of your questions. Um, so keep them coming. If you have any questions, we are here to help. Uh, and I think some of your questions will be answered as we keep going and we hit the course catalog and things like that. Here are some interdisciplinary mini courses that were created. So we have coding explorations, uh, coding explorations in sports, which is popular. We have our art, music, and then math and science. So those are mini courses where students learn to code as it relates to those topics. All right. So these are some fun courses. Uh, we do have Intro to Artificial Intelligence. That is a semester long course, uh, teaches students uh, importance of programming concepts that enable the use of AI in computer science. They do learn the implications of AI on society and develop a series of projects to illustrate the variety of ways AI can be used. Game design in Unity. Um, by the end of this course, students will understand the design planning process, be knowledgeable of in industry-related careers, and be able to navigate the Unity environment in order to create their own 3D games. And then data science, uh, essential skills of a data scientist, which include data collection, cleanup, transformation, analysis, and visualization. Uh, students write algorithms, tell data stories, and build statistical models using Python libraries. And then we do have data structures in C++, uh, advanced data structures used here, such as maps, queues, and sets, applying them in a larger real world assignments and projects. So we do recommend that students take AP CSA, before taking data structures. And then we do have a couple of IB courses. We do have um, a creating a game in Roblox that is 20 contact hours, so it's a month long. And then we do have digital art um, with P5JS, and that is um, graphics using JavaScript. That one is a month long course as well, 20 contact hours. So when I talked about customization with CodeHS, you can, you know, as long as something doesn't have a prerequisite to it or students don't have to already know something, you can build your own course and you could grab, you know, a module from here and there and put something together on your own um, for what you think um, your students need. So that is always something you can do when you are customizing. And then we also have many, many hours of code um, activities that you can choose from. So there's online and there's offline um, activities available. They're great for rec recruiting new students and to see us. Um, also, I know these are used a lot by teachers. Um, if they're going to be out for a day and they're going to have a substitute teacher, because these are all things that students can do without any additional help. Everything is in there for them. So if you um, just choose an hour of code, they would be able to work through it. And then don't forget about Computer Science Education Week um, this year. It is December 4th to 10th, and that's also a great time to use some of these hours of code.
All right, now we're getting to navigating the course catalog. So the link to the course catalog, I know it's been put in the chat. Um, so here is where you can explore all of our course offerings. You can filter for courses. You can either filter them by grade, um, language, level, state. There are many ways to filter so that we can get to what it is that you are looking for. Also from the course catalog, you're able to view the syllabus, um, the unit overview, and you can enroll yourself and your students in courses all from the course catalog. And we're going to hop in there in just a minute. And then uh, you can see that this is what it looks like. Um, this is our new JavaScript course um, that I've taken a screenshot here, Introduction to Computer Science in Corgi. And there are, um, so here's what you'll see when you open the course catalog. Uh, before we explore all the courses, we're gonna take a look and see what we can see um, through the course catalog for any of the courses. So the buttons that are most important to look at um, to help us focus our decision about which course is right for you, um, three specific buttons. We have the view units, the view syllabus, and then the learn more buttons. So if you click the view units button, once we get in there, you'll see that it does give you a description. It lists all the units in the course, and it does give you a short description of what is um, taught in each of the units. And then the next button we're going to look at would be the view syllabus button. And then this is what pops up for the view syllabus button. And this is nice because it breaks um, down the course into units. Um, it lists the topics covered and gives, gives an approximate time to complete the unit. And this informa information is helpful um, when taking into consideration the amount of time um, that you get to spend with your students in your course. So it does help to break it up for you so you know about how long it should take. And then there is the learn more button. And when you click on the learn more button, um, there's quite a bit in here. So it's gonna highlight the level of the course, the contact hours, uh, the time frame, and then it also lists the units. It gives you a quick overview of the units and it even lets you demo um, a sample program that the students would work on while they're going through this unit. So lots of good information um, in the learn more button. Okay, so we are going to, I'm gonna jump live into the course catalog and we are going to start filtering and looking around the course catalog. So this is what it should look like when you first hop in to the catalog. And uh, like I said, you can search by keyword. So if you're wanting um, a specific topic to teach, uh, you can search for that topic. Uh, you can also um, type in something like cybersecurity. So let me just type in cyber security. And then you will see what comes up here. So we have AP, CSP using cybersecurity, fundamentals, advanced, so on and so forth. You can see um, we do have some state courses that have to do with cybersecurity. So you can also filter by grade level. So right here, you can filter by high school, or middle school. Uh, and I did talk about the elementary curriculum lessons earlier. Those are not located within this course catalog. So if you um, think that you would like your school to take a look at um, the elementary curriculum and get some more information about that, um, we do have a link that we'll give you at the end that you can reach out to Code HS and ask about those. But this is the um, middle and high school course catalog. So you can filter by grade level, and then you can also filter by state. All right. 
So I am just going to click on Indiana because that's where I happen to be. And I can see that there's an Indiana Computer Science 3 cybersecurity course. So that is another way that you can filter. And then you can filter by tags. So there are some tags here if you just want Java or if you only want Python, or maybe you're looking for our um, hours of code. You can click through here and you can search with any of these tags. All right, so I'm gonna stop for a minute uh, and see if we need to catch up on answering any questions or if you have any other additional questions you would like to add into the Q&A section. We did have a couple of questions come in, and I do want to mention one of those uh, live. So we were having, uh, Sally and I were chatting a little bit about the APCSB courses that we have available. So we do have three courses, all of which are aligned and endorsed by College Board, um, APCSP and JavaScript, one in Python, and then we have one that has additional cybersecurity content. And often that can be a little bit confusing. That one is not an AP cyber course. It's still AP CSP, but it does have additional uh, cybersecurity lessons that we actually uh, created um, in, in partnership with Insight. They're really great lessons and they're a fun uh, supplemental kind of thing that you can add into AP CSP. But if you're looking to really make sure that, okay, I'm hitting those big ideas and the objectives for College Board um, and really help your kids make sure they're successful uh, in that final test, um, I often tell people you don't need those additional cyber lessons. Uh, I love the cybersecurity aspect, and I think that's one of the things that engages kids. And if you have time, you can always grab those. We even have those standalone. But often I would go with either APCSP and JavaScript or Python. Um, all of the courses are mirrored with each other. And so you would get the same content in each of those. It's just that cyber one has additional content. So that's the main difference there. So I hope that helps. Otherwise, they're very, very close. I think Python has a little bit of difference just because of the data structures, um, like tuples and lists and things like that. But other than that, mirrored. Um, and then let's see. Um, Travis mentioned about how various curriculum specifically aligns to ISTE standards. We can definitely get you some more information so you can see those alignments, Travis. Any of the courses included in our 612 pathway are aligned to CSTA and ISTE standards as well. So I could send, we can get you that information. So for sure. And thank you for all those questions. That was awesome. We've been we've been hopping, <laughs> getting to that was so perfect. And I know some of you to the bone. Yeah, some of you are very excited to get onto the platform, and and uh, I think uh, we're gonna you're gonna be excited because you'll be able to start setting up some or playing around with courses and sections next. So, does anybody have any other questions? Um, Joanna mentions, is a pro license necessary to see lesson plans past the first five? Yes. Um, so it's the first five that are available um, to all teachers. And then after that, it is a pro feature. What I will say is that uh, both Robin and myself actually were free teachers with Code HS. I know I was on free for almost the entire time I taught computer science for nine years, I think. Um, and by the time I left my school district, I was teaching five classes a semester on free. So you can still absolutely do that. We do not restrict any of that curriculum. It's things like, you know, some of the pro features are those lesson plans, but otherwise students do not get restricted on anything. You have access to all of the curriculum. Yep, I was, I was free the whole time. Totally fine. <laughs> All right, um, uh, were there any other questions? Otherwise, uh, I was gonna jump into, have you guys jump into the course catalog? And um, looks like we have, mm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roughly try and hit our break uh, within the next nine minutes. 
Okay, so we're we're getting close, getting close to the halfway point here. All right. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to head into the course catalog. So if you've only been watching me and you haven't actually gotten there yet to navigate around, go ahead and hop into the course catalog. And I want you to take a minute and find a course that you're interested in. So you can either search by keyword, grade level, um, state, or any of these tags and um, find a course that you are interested in. And there are a couple of different ways that you can add courses to teach. Uh, one way is through the course catalog and finding the course that you're interested in. Um, you can look through those three buttons I showed you, the view units to learn more about it, the view syllabus, and then of course the learn more. Um, if you find one that you're interested and you would like to teach or just get it in uh, there for you to look at, um, you can click add to courses here. And then I'll give you a minute to look around for that. And then uh, I wanted to show you the other way that you could add courses, and that would be um, to come over to if you actually happen to be in in your um, Code HS account, you can come over to the side where it says courses, um, and you can actually type in the name that you would want for your course, and then click this create new course button. So there are two different ways that you can. Um, start a course or create a course. Okay. And then while you're going through the course catalog, I'm just going to create a course um, the second way that I showed you by being in my account and clicking on the left where it says courses. So when you're creating a course, this isn't a section, this isn't a class, this is the course with all of the content in it. So for example, if I'm teaching um, APCSP, that would be my course. But within that course, I might have period one, period two, period six, and period eight. So those are sections. So that's a big difference um, between a course and a section is a course houses all of the content that you need. And then each section would be each class that is using that content. So I'm just going to type in my course name. I'm just gonna say APCSP and I'm going to create new course. So this is how I can get to the course template. So this is how I can get to and choose the actual course content that I want. So as you can see, here are all of the courses that we have to offer and you can choose from here. So two ways to get to it. And I'm just going to choose APCSP in JavaScript. And then you can see right here, I have my APCSP in JavaScript. Um, I don't have any sections yet, so I don't have any classes, but I do actually have the course set up. And hopefully everybody's catching up.
All right, and so I clicked on my course so I can see all of the content of the course. So I just clicked directly on the name of the course so I could see all of the content. Now to create sections for a course, I'm just gonna go here on the left-hand side. Again, there are a couple of different ways um, that you can get to this. I'm going to click sections and I'm going to click that I want to create a new section. So all I did was went to the left and clicked sections. And then now I'm gonna click right here where it says create a new section. And I'm going to do the 2023-2024 school year. This is where you can do something like APCSP period one, APCSP period five. This is where you would create your sections. So I'm just going to say APCSP period one. And I'm going to hit next. So it says choose the main course that I want to use for AP CSP period one. And then you can scroll through your courses and find the course that you would like to use um, for that class. Or I'm sorry, for that section. Here's the one that I had started earlier when I created a course, APCSP. So that's the one that I am going to choose. I'm going to go ahead and just click view roster. And obviously we don't have any students in this section we just created. So I just created section one. A Couple of different ways you can have students join your section. You can invite them by email or you can go ahead and give them this link. And this is the class code. So it's always after this forward slash, that is the class code. But I always gave my students this link. I either put it on the board or I put it in my learning management system um, and they clicked on it and they got right in. So those are the two ways that you can enroll students. All right, so before we get into the code editor, now that you've been able to look around in the course catalog, and create a course and create a section for a course. Um, before we hop into the code editor, um, we're gonna take our break. Um, does anybody have any questions before we head out on our break? All right, so let's do a five minute break. Uh, right now for me, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> uh, so let's come back in five minutes. So five minutes from now, we will all converge, grab a coffee, grab a drink, grab a snack, and I'll see you in five.
No, we have a few questions coming in about free versus pro. And so I can take just a couple of minutes to talk a little bit about that before Robin uh, jumps into our second half. And I think, did you say five after? <laughs> or am I starting early? <laughs> yes. Okay. Five after. Sometimes I just launch into things. So there's that. <laughs> um, I'm going to steal the share from you for a sure. second maybe okay can you all see this demo course up here awesome okay so a couple of quick things about free versus pro first of all every single course that you see in the course catalog all of that content is available to all teachers, free or pro. Um, so every course, every state course, every um, every introductory course, the the Unity course, the uh, Cyber course. I don't know why I'm saying individual ones. All of them, all of them. There, they're all free. Um, I have my own pesky little Carol who thinks I'm talking to him right now. So I'm just gonna make him sit for a second. There we go. So um, all of those are free. Um, you are not restricted on that content. So if you choose to teach APCSP in JavaScript or Python or Cyber or APCSA, we don't all of a sudden say, oh, that's all the content you get. You have all of that content. And you even have the supplemental content that's available there as well. Um, and I definitely urge you, we'll talk about this at the end, but I urge you to sign up for the deeper dive into CodeHS on Thursday, because we're going to get even more into customization in that workshop and how you can really build the course out of the, our content that you're looking for, whether you're a free or a pro teacher. So free teachers do have a lot of power on the platform. So some of the pro features and pro, it, we would love to be able to give you more information about what it might look like for your school. But instead, what we can do is actually connect you with other members of our team who will really sit down and talk to you and figure out what you need for your school. But um, before we even do that, some of the things that are available for pro teachers 
are some of the access controls. It's a lot of the bells and whistles. So one of the questions I saw is, do free teachers get access to solutions? Yes. This former English teacher would have cried had I not had solutions available to me. Um, and they are the reason that I learned how to code. So all teachers have access to the solution references. There are some additional uh, content, curricular content that um, is only available for pro, but those are really the teacher resources. So things like uh, some lesson plans, uh, you will have access as a free teacher to the first five or so. Um, but after that, it is a pro feature. But again, that did not impact um, my courses either when I was teaching. Um, you can also, as a pro teacher, have access to a problem guide, which is uh, kind of a, it, it's an enhanced solution reference. So we don't hide any solutions from anybody, but a problem guide gives you a little bit more, like maybe some common questions that students would ask. Um, or some explain this to me videos that help with additional teaching strategies. Those are a pro tool as well. A couple of the other things that are pro, um, the gradebook is actually a pro feature. That does not mean you can't grade on free. It's just a little bit more of a manual process. So gradebook is pro. Um, some of the course settings are also pro. They're a little bit tough to see here, um, but you can see some access controls. Um, due date settings, some scheduling and stuff like that. And uh, we can definitely talk about how free teachers can approach that as well. So some of those are also pro tools. Now, pro is an amazing, amazing thing. So if you can get that for yourself, I absolutely would recommend it. I asked every year <laughs> and I got turned down every year. Um, but it's it's definitely worth it if that's something that uh, that you can talk to your admins about. And we'll give you a link to get more information for that at the end. Um, but know that even as a free teacher, you have access to everything you need to successfully teach your kids any number of computer science topics and programming languages. I hope that helped. I'm gonna pull up chat. Um, we would have to have you work, as far as cost, we'd have to have you work with one of our, somebody else from our team because they do take into consideration class sizes, things like that. Um, let's see, check out the Q&A. And yes, you will absolutely get the, uh, the recording later as well. Um, I will be sending out a follow-up email. It'll probably be tomorrow morning because I'll take a little bit of time to edit the video, uh, make it jazzy, <laughs> and uh, I'll send that out to you tomorrow morning with the resources as well. Um, the web game development, there's a web development course, James, the Unity course, I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. We can look at that in a little more detail. Um, I would definitely also recommend to everybody, and I'll stop talking in a minute, Robin, I'm sorry, I'm waxing on poetically here. Um, definitely take a look at our free page, our free uh, virtual summer page, because we have so many workshops coming up. This is just the start. So. Robin is getting us started. Deeper Dive on Thursday with Sean Razor is also going to take us more into the platform. You're going to see what else you can do and really get you feeling comfortable. And after that, we're going to dive into JavaScript. We're going to have a Python week. We're going to have Cyber uh, Week. We're also going to have a Web Design Week and Web Development Week. We've taken it and tried to level each week so you can start with the most basic um, parts of each of the courses and level yourself up from there. And so every week is themed. And when you start to see things, if you're really excited about, hey, what could I do with web development? Yeah, we have a whole web development course. You can also see what teacher trainers like Kent Pendleton might do with uh, his web development by creating his own custom activities. And by the way, you can do that on free. So lots to look forward to. If you can't make it to all of the sessions, no worries, sign up. I will send you that email with all of the follow-ups. Any other questions right now? Okay, well, I'm gonna stop talking because Robin has an awful lot more to share with us. She's gonna take us into the platform next. So take it away, Robin. All righty, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing as always. Uh, let me move some stuff out of my way. 
Okay, hopefully that works. We shall see. Okay. Uh, so as Lori said, uh, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the code editor. Um, and what you can do for this one is... Um, we are not seeing your screen yet. Oh. I stole oh, your screen. Oh, <laughs> you bumped me off. No, I messed it all up. I'm so sorry. Okay, hold on. My way. I've been to my workshops before, you know, Lori's just here to disrupt life. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you. Okay. Let me know when you can if you can see it. Okay, good. Awesome. Perfect. And we're back. Okay. So um, what I'm going to have you do is um, <clears throat> let's go into your account. So if you go to um, into your account, your Code HS account, a couple different ways you can get here. <laughs> we always have a few different ways you can get somewhere. Um, the section that you joined uh, for this workshop, um, right here is where mine is. Of course, I might have a lot more than you, so you might not need to fish through all of this, but it says right here, getting started with Code HS summer 2023. Um, so if you go under my sections up here or sections over here, uh, hopefully you are able to get to it. So I am just going to go ahead and click on it. Getting started with Code HS summer 2023. And it takes me to a screen that looks like this. You can see we have some teachers. Here are all of the amazing students. So I can see all of you are in. Uh, and again, a couple different ways we can get to the assignments because it's um, in those assignments that we will find the code editor. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, we have assignments. Up here at the top, we have assignments. Um, I usually use the left. I usually use everything over here on the left-hand side. So I am going to um, go ahead and I am going to click on assignments. And here we are. So if I just click on this big box right here, you can see we have our workshop resources. And I am going to click where it says workshop slides. And here are the slides for today. Um, here is a, mine says grade assignment for section. I'm in as a teacher. Uh, and then I have preview. And then I have some other configuring that I can do as well while I'm in here. I can also come up here and switch to the student view so I can see what students see. I know that's a big thing for teachers as we um, obviously want to see it as a teacher. But then we also want to take a look and see what it looks like uh, from the student side. So I am going to click this button up here that says switch to student view. And it looks like this. So this is probably what it looks like for you um, since you are in as students. So here are the slides. You can click on this button and it would take you to the slides. I'm gonna come back down here and I'm gonna click my little home button way down here in the bottom left. I'm gonna click this home button and it's gonna take me back. There's a workshop survey that we're gonna have you guys um, take at the end. But here, are, um, I added one unit to our little um, workshop section. And this unit is programming with Carol in JavaScript. So I'm just going to click on it. And here we go. So here you can see all of the dis different lessons that come in this unit and the setup of each one of these lessons. So we call this a unit, programming with Carol, unit one. And then we call each one of these a lesson. So the first lesson I'm looking at is this introduction to programming with Carol. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this. And you can see how all of our lessons are set up. We always start with a video that walks through and explains any new concepts to the students. And then we have a check for understanding that's got a couple of quiz questions. There's always at least one example that goes through an example program um, of what they just learned in the video. And then this one happens to have two exercises. So the first exercise is called Your First Carol Program. And the second exercise is called Short Stack. So these exercises um, are what those students would work on on their own. 
The example is already done for them. It allows them to run the example, modify the example, work with the example, um, but the exercises are them proving their knowledge of what they've learned in this lesson. So I am just gonna kind of go through here. Here's the video. Hi, in this lesson, we'll introduce you to okay. And we're not gonna watch the whole video. Um, I'm going to move to the quiz. This one only happens to have um, one question. Uh, sometimes there are two, sometimes there are five. It all depends on how much content is in there. So which of these is the valid Carol command? The students can check and then submit. So I wanna show you something else as well. This video down here at the bottom of my screen um, is yellow. And the reason why it's yellow is because I never finished watching it. I clicked on it and then I kept moving. So yellow means I took a look at it, but didn't finish it. You can see this one is a nice greenish turquoise color because I actually completed that quiz. And then all of these gray ones uh, I haven't gotten to yet. So the color coding does help. So I am going to, now I'm up to the example. And it says, this is an example for the lesson. You're encouraged to play around with it, run and change the code and learn how it works. And then when you are done, you can click continue to go to the next problem. So I'm going to click on explore this example. And you can see that it's got um, the result world here. Um, this is the starting world. So Carol is starting in this lower left-hand corner. And in the end, if I do everything correctly, there would be a ball here and Carol would be here in the end. So this is the start and this is what I want. And they already figured it out for us. They put in all of the commands. So I wanna talk about, so this is what we call the code editor. Uh, the left panel is sometimes called the cheat sheet. And um, the panel in the middle would be the code editor. And then the panel on the right, which has multiple tabs, um, we're gonna take a look at all of these different things. All right, so this one over here shows us the result world. It also has some quick docs down under here. So if students can't remember from watching the video um, or answering the quiz questions, uh, what commands they learned, we have a little quick docs area that gives them some information over here. This is where you do all of your typing or your coding inside here. Um, and then they can edit it, they can save it, uh, they can continue. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hit run. And hopefully you saw that it highlighted yellow each row as it was going through. Uh, and so he he moved and he moved and he put a ball and he moved and he moved and he got to the correct spot. And even down here at the bottom, it says, nice job, um, you got it and you can continue. So I wanna look at a couple um, other things. Let's look at um, an actual exercise and I'll show you some other things that you can look at. So the next one says, I'm looking at this first one with the pencil down at the bottom. It says your first Carol program. You could also just hit continue on this one, or you could hit continue here. Again, a few different ways to get to that next spot, but I'm going to go to the first actual exercise and it's called your first Carol program. So I'm gonna give you a minute to get to that first exercise called um, your first Carol program. All right, so hopefully we are here. And so this is again, how a student would see the program. I'm under the student view. And over here in what we call the little cheat sheet area, we do have the result world. So I want it to look like this in the end. So I want Carol, um, Carol starts here. And as you can see, there is a ball here, but I don't want that in the end. What I want in the end 
is I want Carol where the ball is, but I want the ball to be missing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over um, some things that we can do. So it looks like I need to move Carol one, two, three, four places. So I'm just gonna type in the move command. And so I don't have to keep typing it over and over again. I'm just gonna hit command. We have to be, or I'm sorry, copy. We have to be efficient. So I do want Carol to move. Oh, I forgot to highlight my semicolon. I want Carol to move four times. And as a student, I might say, oh, um, I know I need to get rid of this ball, but I don't know how. I can't remember what the code is to get rid of this ball um, because I know he needs to be standing here, but the ball needs to be missing. I can look over here in this little cheat sheet area and there's a command called take ball. And either you can copy it from over here with which the students um, catch on to really fast, or you can just look at it and type it on your own. And I am going to run my program. So here's the run button. And I'm just going to see what happens. And it's moving through. And he took in. It says, nice job. Now, um, let's say I forgot to put in these parentheses up on the top. I am going to hit run. And it says error. It actually says line five. No tennis balls to pick up. Because what happened was... Um, he only moved one, two, three times because this one is not going to work without those two parentheses. So the nice thing about the code editor um, is that it will tell you your errors and it will help you to find them and it will help you to figure them out. The other thing that you can do is you can speed up the code because sometimes uh, Carol is building some extravagant things uh, with the tennis balls, and you don't want to sit there all day and wait for it. So you can actually kind of go through and speed it up, or you can slow it down. So I'll show you that. And I'm going to put it on super fast rabbit. All right. And let's see. No tennis balls. Oh, I have to reset. Oh, the other thing is you can reset your code right here and put it back to the beginning so that you can run it again. Ooh, didn't even see him move. That's how fast he was with the rabbit, right? Um, I'm gonna reset again. You can actually step through your code. So you can step forward, um, you can pause, you can step backward. So you can see it going through each step of the code. So if I use this over here, I clicked and then clicked again and clicked again. And this really does help when you get into some of those extravagant programs to figure out exactly what Carol's doing, where Carol is at, figure out maybe if Carol turned a certain way and uh, Carol wasn't supposed to. So this step through is really good. Uh, the other thing is um, here, sometimes there are different worlds that Carol um, will be running a program in. Sometimes you have to use three different worlds at one time. So we have this here. That gets fun. And then there's this check code. So this I have my students go to all the time. And this is what um, we're looking for. This is what we're looking to see if it worked. And if it worked, then we'll say congratulations. It grades it. It says 100%, three out of three. Um, and you move on to the next one. So if something was wrong, so let me get rid of one of my move commands. Okay. And I am resetting and I'm just gonna check my code. It tells me right away, there's a functionality problem. So it's not letting me move on. It's letting me know that there's a problem. Carol it didn't move uh, four times, so it didn't work. So that is this check code button. And this is really helpful. Um, sometimes it checks, you know, it goes all the way down to here on different things that it's checking. But I love CodeHS because um, this is an auto grade feature for you. Students can type in part of the code, hit check code, see what they're missing, see what they need to correct, type the rest in, hit check code again, um, and really work through the problem. And it really helps with the debugging as well. Um, so I am going to put my move back in. 
And I am going up here to the top. I'm going to reset my code again. And I'm going to run it. So I did get my nice job. You got it. At this point, students would hit this submit and continue button, and it would take them to the um, next exercise or the next lesson, whatever it is that they're heading to. Okay. I do want to show you up here, up at the top, all of these other tabs here. So here are the test cases. So run code is what we've been in. We've been running it. We've been speeding it up, or you could slow it down. Uh, we've reset our code. We've stepped through our code and you can step backward too or forward. Here are the test cases. And this is what we're looking for, um, Carol, to be able to pass. So of course, we're looking for all green check marks here. Um, and if there isn't one, that is helping the student to figure out what they need to correct. So those are the test cases. This is part of the auto grading. If we go here for the assignment, uh, it tells you what the assignment is. So it says write a program to have Carol move to the tennis ball and pick it up. So if a student forgot what the assignment is, um, because it does pop up on the screen before this, um, they can always click here and see what it is they're supposed to be doing. And then something that's used quite a bit is this Docs tab. So this is where students will spend a lot of time as they're learning coding, and it has um, the commands, um, all of the information that a student might need to be able to complete the programming exercises. So if they're looking for for loops, if they're looking for while loops, things like that, maybe they can't remember how to set up a for loop, they can actually come over here um, and get that information so that they know that they type it incorrectly. And again, sometimes they're over here on the left hand side, but if CodeHS thinks that the students may have gotten that by now and they don't need that over here, uh, maybe something new was learned and replaced this, students can always click in this little box area and you can actually search for whatever it is that you need. So you could do a command F and you could type in that you need a while loop. So I just command F to find, and I typed in while loop. And you can see that all through here, if I click my arrow, it will pop up anywhere where it talks about a while loop and students can grab what they need. So super helpful. And then we have this grade tab. So this one says current grade, not graded. Um, Robin has not submitted this assignment yet. Um, score zero out of five. So this is what um, Lori was talking about. You can, um, well, first of all, many of the assignments are auto graded for you. So you wouldn't have to come in here and manually say, you know, I'm going to give you this out of this. The student would complete the program, run the test cases. Uh, it would say it's great, submit and continue. It would give them the full points and move on. Now those aren't the, let's say it gives them three points or it gives them five points. Um, it's up to you if that's what you wanna put into your grade book or if you don't wanna give them like five points. Um, I know when I was putting in um, my uh, scores and my points for when my students were completing this, um, I had certain things that I had to follow in my school, formative or summative or things like that. And so you may end up altering um, how you put those points into your LMS or your um, school grade book. But students always knew, like if it said they got five out of five, they got 100%, whether that was 10 points in my grade book or something along those lines. And then this more tab, this is where students can actually send you a message. Uh, and we use this quite a bit um, in Code HS with the boot, boot camps that we, we run. So if a student is working on, let's say, this exercise, and they've run into an issue and they can't figure it out, they can actually go to this conversation tab, and they can type the um, teacher question. They can say, I, you know, I've tried this and that, I can't get this to work. Um, and you would be able to see that you got a message from the student. You would be able to open it up, and you would be able to see um, their code and you would be able to uh, reply back to them. So this is a really helpful feature as well. 
um, for students uh, if they're having questions. And this, this was really helpful um, during COVID too when um, we were all at home and students were working on this at home. So that is also another helpful feature. Um, I am going to pause for a minute. That was a lot of information um, and see if there are any questions that we need to answer for you. Uh, feel free to click around. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to make sure we hit everything. All right, and then the next thing that we're gonna go over is I talked to you um, about the fact that I wanted you to see it from a student perspective. I wanted you to see um, Code HS from a student perspective. And so we're actually going to walk through um, a Code HS lesson together where you guys get to be the students um, and I will be the teacher. And I'll run through a lesson so you can see. Um, and obviously you can modify lessons um, any way that you choose. You could do a different bell ringer or do now an exit ticket, um, anything that you want. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit. Okay, so I am going to head back over to my slides and I'm going to walk you through a lesson. Okay. All right, so this is the lesson format we talked about. Starts with the video, heads the quiz. Um, there's at least one example, but many times there are several examples for students to work through and practice with before they head out and try and do exercises on their own. Um, so here we go. So our learning objectives for today are you're going to be able to write your first Carol program by typing out all of the Carol commands with the proper syntax. And you should be able to explain how giving commands to a computer is like giving commands to a dog. So the first thing I want you to do in the chat is tell me what is a computer? Ooh, a machine that processes data in binary form, device that performs computations, machine that takes input, processes the input, stores the input, and gives output. These are all great. You're such good students. Device that helps you accomplish something useful. Nice, nice. So it's interesting. Yeah, um, if you look up the definition of a computer, uh, you will get many, many definitions for a computer. And all of the definitions that you gave are amazing and all perfect. How about this though? What is computing? What does it mean to compute? These are things we talk about quite a bit. We talk about computers, we talk about computing. Um, but what is computing? To process instructions, awesome. All right. So here we are. This is the intro to care lesson. This is the very first lesson that is in the unit that is in your workshop section. So you are my students. Here we go. Hi, welcome to the first Code HS video. In this video, we're going to introduce you to programming with Carol the dog. So who or what is this Carol? Well, Carol is a dog who listens to your commands. And here I have a picture of Carol. So, and what do we do 
exactly with this Carol? Well, we can move around Carol's world and put down tennis balls. So let's take a look at Carol's world. Carol lives in a grid world where each dot represents a location that Carol can be at. And Carol can move around this world and put down tennis balls. But more specifically, what can Carol do? Well, Carol knows only four commands. Move, turn left, put ball, and take ball. Move moves Carol one spot in the direction that he's facing. Turn left rotates Carol uh, 90 degrees to the left. Put ball adds one ball in the spot that Carol's at, and take ball removes one ball. So let's dissect a Carol command. What exactly do you need to write? Well, first, it must be one of those four words that Carol knows. There are no spaces in the commands. You need to match the capitalization exactly, and each command needs to end in open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon, so that Carol can understand it. So the best way to learn how to program and the best way to dive into Carol is just by doing it. So we're going to write our first Carol program, which starts in the world on the left with Carol in the bottom left corner facing east and ends in the world on the right, where Carol has moved two spots, put down a tennis ball, and then moved two more spots. So let's go into our code editor and write this program. Okay, so what we want to do first is have Carol move and then move again. Let's just click run to see what this does so far. Move, move. And if I change the speed and reset, run, move, move, Carol moves slower. And then we want to put down a ball and then we want to move and we want to move again. So let's reset and run our program. So Carol will follow the commands that we give him in order. So move, move, put ball, move, move. Well, there you go, we've done it. We've written our first Carol program. Now it's your turn to try writing your own Carol program. All right. So our first Carol example is what we looked at and he worked us through. Um, so at this point, we know that Carol needs to move once, move twice, and then put a ball. And then we know he needs to move once and twice. And so he is still facing east. Um, with any of the examples, I encourage you to play around with them, um, modify them in any way, try different things too. Try capitalizing some of the commands, see what happens if you take out the parentheses, see what happens if you leave off a semicolon to help you troubleshoot and work through some of the debugging um, that might need to happen as you work your way through the exercises. All right, so it is your turn. So what I want you to do, if you haven't already, is I want you to go to your first Carol program. And there's one right after that called short stack. And what I want you to do is complete those individually. And if we were in class today and not online, I would have you do the second exercise with a partner, but today I'm going to have you do both of these on your own. So take a minute to complete your first Carol program in our workshop section and short stack. All right, and then for time's sake, um, hopefully in your first Carol program, 
you were able to figure out that Carol needed to move one, two, three, four places. So you should have four move commands. And then we know that in a result world, there are no tennis balls. So you should have been able to figure out that on this spot, you would need to use the command take ball so that Carol would be in the right position and there would be no tennis ball. And then if we look at the short stack exercise and we look at the result world, we can see that there are to be two tennis balls in our second location and Carol should move one more time. So Carol's not on the tennis balls. And we can see where Carol started. So hopefully you were able to figure out that you should move one time. And then we haven't typed this one yet, but we are actually not taking any balls this time. We are putting balls down. So um, we are going to use this put ball command and uh, Carol should move, put ball, put ball, and move one more time. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get your second exercise completed. And then to close out our lesson, can anybody, um, I want each person to type in one command that they know that Carol already knows how to do. And we said, Carol knows four commands. Can we try to get all four of those commands into the chat? Very nice, very nice. I see coming some coming in. Uh, do you remember the syntax that we use for a command? Awesome, awesome. Yes, so as we remember, we actually use lower camel case. So take ball starts with a lower case and ball is uppercase. We do have the two parentheses and the semicolon. You are all amazing. Thank you, thank you. Good job. All right, so for your homework today, and I know we all love homework, class, um, I do have this handout that I am going to give everyone that um, is a little more exploration about the Carol commands. All right, so that was a lesson, a very quick lesson um, that we have available uh, with Code HS um, with this lesson, or yeah, with this lesson that we were going through. So I want to talk about um, some lesson planning strategies real quick while we, while we have some time. Um, so there are different ways that you can use the videos. So some people choose to use that video um, at the start of their lesson. They'll play the video for the class. Um, some people choose to not use the video and they choose to use slides instead. And the slides are um, located in uh, Code HS. So um, if you're really comfortable, then you would use the slides maybe. Uh, if not, maybe you'd use the video. But if you use the video, you might wanna stop and pause and ask questions. Sometimes um, teachers will have students just um, use earbuds and watch the video on their own. So it's all up to you what your style is and how, do you, how you wanna use any of the resources that we have for you. Uh, some people choose to use an Edpuzzle. I did put together some Edpuzzles um, while I was teaching. They are pretty cool. Uh, and an Edpuzzle is just where you upload a video and you can type in some questions that you want the students to be answering, typing the answers into um, while watching the video. So an Edpuzzle is just going to play the video, stop, students will have to answer the question you typed in, and then it's going to keep going. So Edpuzzles are also um, kind of cool as well, maybe not while you're in class, but if it's something that maybe students need to do on their own, um, that's really cool to do. Uh, let's see. And then the example exercises. So we did go through the example exercise. Again, you can choose to use the example exercises any way that you would want. You could use it as exemplar code, code to see how the coding concepts work. You could practice reading the code. You could do a code tracing activity. Uh, you could modify the example by adding a coding challenge. So maybe you could say instead of Carol um, adding two balls, have Carol add 10. Or instead of um, 
you know, ending on the fourth spot, have them end on the fifth spot. And so just trying different things. Um, I also like to put errors in my code quite often um, for students to be able to debug with me and say, that's not going to work. You forgot the semicolon. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot it. Um, so that is also another way to use the example exercises is just to, you know, work on them together and um, work on your debugging and things like that. And then ways to use the exercises. So these are the ones that um, students do on their own. It's not an example, it's not done for them. So you can use these to assess their understanding of the concepts or the skills that they learned. You could have them do something that's called pair programming for one of the exercises where two students work together um, one types and one tells them what to type or they switch roles, things like that to get them working with another student and collaborating, um, which is actually, I loved doing that, um, having the students help each other with the exercises. Um, or of course, you could have them complete the exercises individually. It's totally up to you how you want to use those. All right. So I wanted to talk about the lesson plans um, that we have with Code HS. So there are discussion questions, there are suggestions for you to use um, as a class opener or as an exit ticket. Um, it talks about like the timing, how long it should take. And then the lesson plans have the solution references, although you can still get to those in um, Code HS. And um, lesson plan accommodations, and also the standards alignment. So I do have a lesson plan. Um, if either Lori or Gareth, hopefully that link is there um, for you guys to be able to take a look at a lesson plan. Actually, I have it right here. I can copy it and paste. There we go. Okay. Um, so this takes you to, um, that link I just put in the chat, takes you to the Introduction to Programming with Carol lesson plan. So you can take a look at that. And I just want to kind of get through here. Let me open up mine. Okay. So here is the introduction to programming uh, with Carol lesson plan. And this is actually what I just walked through with you. So you can see the objectives and I had the objectives on my slide and I copied and pasted them right here from this lesson plan. And I know that my uh, principals always wanted the learning objectives for the day um, on our agendas. So this is a nice place to get that. Um, it shows you all of the different activities that are going to be in it. Uh, it shows you the solution references, and then it shows you the problem guides, and it says it's a more in-depth look at the lessons problems, so you can click on those. Here are some handouts if you wanted to do a handout with the students in class to kind of expand on their learning for the day. There's the teacher um, version, of course, with the answers, and then the, the student version. We do have some other um, supplemental things that you could use as well in here. Um, we do have this in a textbook format uh, if you um, want them to kind of be able to scroll through pages. You can look at that. And then they do offer in the lesson plan some planning notes. It says uh, provide time before lesson to have them set up accounts. Um, so it really is trying to get you set up for success. Here are some different lesson opener options that you could use. The activities, it says you can consider having students complete a scavenger hunt. So all sorts of cool things. Couple options for a lesson closer um, if you're interested. Here are the slides. And like I said, maybe you didn't want to show the video. Maybe you wanted to be able to pop through the slides one by one and go through it with your students. We also have some discussion questions. So I actually had you guys do this first one. So what is a computer and what is computing? Uh, the other one are how, how are instructions used to execute simple tasks? And then here are some end of class discussion questions. 
Uh, at the bottom of the lesson plan, it has some modifications. Uh, if you have some advanced students, special education modification, and then also for English language learners. So these are all super helpful. And then um, some of the standards that this lesson is hitting. So there's a wealth of information, um, activities, and suggestions um, for you to use in the lesson plans. And then if you had any um, questions, oh, it didn't work. Were you guys able to get to it with the second one? Hopefully. Well, hopefully you can see mine. All right. Okay. Um, so I just want to kind of skip around here. I know we're running out of time. We have seven minutes left. And I want you to also have time to fill out the... Um, to also fill out the uh, review for today. But I wanted you to take a look at this, um, lesson alterations. So the ones in blue are the ones that I did, but you can also um, do any of these other things. So teach with the slides, watch individually, if you have a flipped class. So these are all different ways that you can alter your lessons when you're going through the Code HS lessons. And I think I'm going to end there. Um, like I said at the beginning, though, this is a rush, rush, full of information, um, but you do have access to the slides. Please feel free to go through the rest of them um, if you wanted to learn more information on anything that I wasn't able to go over today. Um, you can also reach out to us as well. So let me head to the last couple slides. Um, let me, okay. So here are some other resources um, that CodeHS has. Uh, you can become a CodeHS certified educator. You can attend the free um, workshops, which you guys are doing right now. Uh, the course catalog link is also on here. Talks about micro credentials. Uh, and one of the big things is being a community of CS teachers. Uh, especially if you're in a school alone um, as the only CS teacher, um, please feel free to join the Facebook educators group that we have out there. Um, and we are also on um, Twitter and Instagram, but I know that Facebook is the one that's got the biggest um, following. So there are quite a few things going on to, or going on in Facebook. And then, um, if you want a deeper dive, and I know Lori mentioned this earlier, uh, with using Code HS, um, Sean on Thursday, June 8th from 11 to 1, same time, is going to be going even deeper into Code HS, and I can let him know kind of where I left off so that he can maybe go over a few of those things. And then also getting started teaching JavaScript um, is also coming up, but feel free to go to codehs.com forward slash free PD. And you can sign up for any of the professional development opportunities that we have throughout the summer, because there's a lot, a lot of good stuff. So make sure you click that link and get yourself signed up. And then the last thing is just our workshop survey. Let us know how we did. Um, if you could click on the link that is already in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would appreciate you taking the survey. You guys made it. Four minutes to spare. Woof, what a whirlwind. <laughs> and definitely make sure, sign up for those upcoming workshops. Like we've mentioned, there are so many coming up and we've tried to uh, structure them so you've got different weeks uh, to attend throughout the summer. Um, next week, uh, this is platform week, so that is what Sean will be following up with on Thursday. And you will not want to miss what he has to talk about because he will be looking at customization and collaboration. If you haven't checked out the sandbox, you are missing out. There's a lot there. And next week, we'll be teaching JavaScript, where we'll have a workshop from Paula Medina on getting started with JavaScript. Um, then we have Eric Magnus, who will showing a, he'll be showing us some Indiana Carroll and 
Kent Pendleton will be with us as well to do some P5JS. We have a Python week following that, cybersecurity. Um, and we've got some physical computing in July, uh, as well as we've even got one on game design with Unity. And I missed the AI workshop. It's in there in the Python week too. And for our AP teachers, we've got you covered. Starting July 31st, we have AP week. So we'll be doing some APCSP workshops and APCSA as well. Um, um, Melissa, oh, I'm sorry. I saw Melissa's uh, chat. Um, she said that she was feeling uh, intimidated. Do not feel intimidated. I'm telling you, Code HS was so helpful for me. Um, and like Lori said, she was an English teacher. I taught business. I never took any kind of computer science class before, and I was able to uh, become really good uh, by using Code HS and working my way through. And I can tell you, you know, for that first year, I was a step ahead of the kids, you know, always a day ahead of them, making sure I kind of knew what I was doing before I went. But uh, with everything that you have and with everything that we offer, you will be totally fine. Absolutely. Yeah, keep popping on into these workshops too. Um, I will say once you become a Code HS educator, I have always felt like you're just a part of the Code HS family. You're part of part of the Code HS uh, ecosystem at that point. So we just pull you in, and you're uh, you're a part of our educator educator world at that point. So. We really hope we can keep seeing you at all the workshops that we have this summer. And don't hesitate to reach out to us if you've got any questions. Um, we're always happy to help. And the support team is unbelievably amazing at how fast they, and, and they're so helpful. There's sometimes when I answer a question and then the support team answers and I think, yeah, that was better. <laughs> so <laughs> they're amazing. Here's that uh, attendance link one more time. If you didn't hit it at the start of the workshop, um, there's the link for you for your certificate of attendance for attending this two hour webinar. And I will be sending out the follow up email. Um, it'll be by tomorrow morning at the very latest. Just depends on how quickly I can get that um, done and out and ready to go. So expect to see that coming soon. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you guys participating and showing up. You guys were amazing. Um, I'm excited that you came on this journey and we look forward to helping you in any way that we can and enjoy your summer. Hopefully you guys are done with school or almost done. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, everybody. We'll go ahead and wrap up for today. and We hope we get to see you on Thursday. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.